All right, welcome everybody to our professional development today. The title of our course is Engaging Early Learners Using iPads. We're going to start off with some introductions today. My name is Ms. Bodkin. I am a kindergarten teacher here at EB Ellington. I'm going to go around and the webcam will be on you for a second. You can introduce yourself and say what grade level that you teach here. And thank you for working with me on our location today. I know it's a little cramped. Hello, I'm Claire Gregory and I teach the fourth grade. Mike Smith and I teach fifth grade. I'm Julie Schneider and I teach second grade. All right, great. So we have a variety of grades here and you can use iPads in all different grade levels. Raise your hand if you have experience using iPads in the classroom. Okay, a couple of you. All right, I see you in the back. You definitely have experience. All right, well definitely we'll open up your iPad. If you have a MacBook, it can work on a MacBook as well. And raise your hand if you know how to airdrop. Anybody? Okay, I'm going to show you for those of you that don't know. It's very simple. Here at the bottom, you'll drag this up, and you'll have some little icons here. And at the bottom underneath those icons, there's one that says AirDrop. If you click on that, you'll have an option that says Off, Context Only, or Everyone. For the sake of this class, we're going to click Everyone. And then that makes your iPad visible to everybody in this classroom. So what I can do now is I'm going to go into Pages, and I've just made a sample document of something that you could use in your classroom. I'm going to airdrop it to each of your iPads. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to you. Make sure you have your airdrop on so that I can find your iPad. Okay, I just sent it. So raise your hand when you have it and if you can open it. All right, I see you've got it. Got it. Do you have it? Let me see if I can help, come over and help you. Okay. Yeah, so you have to download this. There you go. If you hit everyone, now you can see it. Thank you. All right, yeah, you do have to make sure that it's on and it says for everyone, because if you just hit contacts only, that's only the contacts that you have in your iPad. It's not like your contacts on your email or anything, the ones you specifically have for AirDrop. So go ahead and take a minute. You can scroll through this document that I've sent you. Now, this is a simple document that I use in my kindergarten classroom. So obviously it wouldn't work in your fifth grade classroom or what grade did you say you are? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. But you can make documents for your class. So I'm going to show you a little bit of how to use this. The app that you've opened this in is Pages. So when you open it, it automatically open the app Pages. So since all of you could open it, that automatically means that you already have the app on your computer. So this is one app and what you can do is to set up a worksheet like this, it's simply just using shapes and numbers to create it. So what I did here for number one, now everything's locked on here so I can't move it around, was I hit an insert text box here and I typed the directions. Oops. And then I hit insert shape up here at the top. You can hit these tools and it shows you all these tools that you can click on. And if you click on the tool, I'm sorry, it's the paintbrush. And then you can hit insert shape. And I inserted three squares and then inserted the number on top of it. And you can just move them around and then you can right click on them and hit lock so that the kids can't move it around. So then I have the directions and then... Move the number blocks into the correct order. I inserted a sound box over here so that the kids in my kindergarten class, they can't read these directions. So I inserted the triangle and I inserted a sound clip that I recorded on my iPad over here so that it would read the directions to them. Move the number blocks into the correct order. Which makes this really great to use in the kindergarten classroom because it can become independent work now. Since they can't read the directions on their own, they can do that. Another one thing I really want to point out on this is down here. It says record yourself reading a sen or I'm sorry. Write your own sentence. So they can read my sample one here. The cat went to the store. You all should be able to see this on your iPad so you can follow along. If I'm going too fast, if you have any questions, let me know. Now for them to type, they click in this box and then they can type. Well, for a lot of our kids, especially in the younger grades, when you click in the box, they can't type all these words yet. They can't figure out all the words that they want. So what they can do is use the microphone, which is down here in this corner. You guys can all find yours. And they can say the sentence they want. So, this is our class. And I can hit done. 
So now they have their own sentence right there, and they're making that connection. They're making that connection of what they're speaking is also words that they can read and write. So that's one great tool, the voice-to-text tool using an iPad. And with that little microphone, you can use that on almost any app. They can use it when they're typing in websites. If they want to search something, they can click that little microphone. If they're doing a research project on animals, things like that. And then right here, I put record yourself reading a sentence, add the video below. So when they click on here, they can insert a video. Now, does everybody know how to make a video on the iPad? Yes. yes. Okay. So they would have to exit out of that and then go to their videos, record a video of them reading something in the classroom. Then they're back in that yellow app of pages. They would insert their video. So this is one app I went through kind of quickly called Pages. The other one I want to show you that's really good, especially for some of the older grades, is Keynote. So Keynote, it kind of looks like a little lampshade. It's this blue app right here. And if you click on that, does everybody have this app on your iPad? If yes. not, you can go into your app store and just type in Keynote. So I get to one of the ones that I did. Okay, I know I went through that app a little bit quickly, Pages, so if anybody wants to stay after class, I'd be more than happy to show you a little bit more about that. But the one I really want to focus on today is called Keynote. Keynote is like PowerPoint for the iPad. So raise your hand if you used PowerPoint before. Okay, so almost everybody. That's a very common thing on PCs and MacBooks that everybody uses. So Keynote is like PowerPoint for the iPad. It's very simple to use. When you open it up, this first square here will say create presentation and you can click on it and then you have all your templates just like you're used to in PowerPoint and you can choose one that you think best fits your needs. So first I want to show you one of the things that I use with my kindergarten students and just kind of shows you all the different things that you can really do on Keynote. So I made a game that my students could play called Consonant Sound Matching. And the directions said, click on the picture that begins with a consonant on the slide. So they had the consonant at the top, D, and they had to think dog or fish, which one starts with it? Everybody, which one is uh, it? But if you would have clicked wrong, uh, it says try again with the sad face. And then they would click the arrow, which would bring them back to the slide again. If they click the right one, it says good job and the arrow will lead them to the next slide. So this is one thing that I made on PowerPoint, or on Keynote. So I'm gonna break it down and show you some of the tools that I did. But first I want you to think of some ways that maybe you could use this in your classroom. I made a little game in my kindergarten classroom, but think about a way that you could use it in your fourth grade classroom, fifth grade classroom, or whatever classroom that you're in. So go ahead and take a minute to think, and then I'm gonna bring the webcam around. You can share some of your ideas of how you think you could use this in the classroom, and then we'll go from there to show you the tools of how to make that happen. All right, so we're going to go around and you can just share with us some of your ideas of how you could use it. So close. All right, Ms. Gregory. I think I would probably use it for a center activity. Okay. I could use it for review games like Jeopardy. I was thinking about making um, a slide presentation for our parent conferences. Yeah, all of those are great ideas. So I'll show you some ways that you could use this to accomplish some of those goals. Okay, so those are all great ideas of how to use Keynote in your classrooms that would work for your grade level. I'm gonna show you some tools that would help you create all those things that you've just discussed. So the first thing you need to do, so as I'm talking, I would like for you guys to kind of work along with me, and then there's, at a certain point, I'm gonna let you work independently or with a partner to create one of, excuse me, okay, all right. I'm gonna let you work independently or with a partner and you guys can actually work on creating a presentation and then we can share them at the end of the course. All right, so first thing I'd like you to do, um, ma'am, please stay with us. I'm sorry. Okay. The first thing I'd like you guys to do is click the Create Presentation button, which I've already done, and go ahead and pick whichever one you want. Whichever one you think would be best for education and your grade level. 
So I'm just going to click the white one. Just keep it simple. Go ahead and click it. All right. Now in this slide is where you make a title. So I love the idea of the Jeopardy review game. So you could put your title there as Jeopardy. All you have to do is simply double tap to edit, and then your keyboard will come up. And you can type in whatever your title will be. So Jeopardy review. Or if you're making something else, you could type in a center activity, like a phonics match, like I did. Or if you're making a presentation, you could put parent conferences, or all about the students, whatever the title of yours is going to be. Now up here in this will be the right hand corner. You will see the paintbrush, which is all your formatting for your text. You can pick the alignment, bold, underline, and the type of writing. So if you want to go ahead and edit your title now, go ahead and do that. Next is a tool you'll use a lot. This little add button, like a plus sign. And here's where you can add a text box if you need to type something else on a slide or add a shape. So if I'm just going to add, let's say, an arrow like I did on the other slides, then I can drag it to wherever it needs to go. So usually I have an arrow on each slide for the kids to click so that they know they're going to the next slide. You can drag those little corners to make it bigger. And then what you can do Once you have inserted a shape or a text box, you can come up here and click this little wrench that's next to the save button. And you can click Presenta presentation tools. When you click on that, you can click interactive links. Is everybody still with me? Yeah. All right. Interactive links. And I have it connected to this arrow here, and I could say go to the next slide. So now, when they would click this, it would automatically bring them to the next slide. So when you're creating a game, that's how I connected it to either go to the next slide when they got the answer right or to go back a slide if they got it wrong. So, and then you can just hit done. And then up here is your play button when you're ready to watch your presentation. And this button right here with the square is how you could save it and export it. One thing that's great about using this instead of the PowerPoint is when it's on here, you can use that airdrop tool that we used at the beginning and airdrop to all of your students. So if you're using it as a center activity, you could airdrop this at each student's iPad or a couple iPads in the classroom and everybody would be able to access it. So what I'm going to do now is give you all some free exploration time. You can work with somebody maybe close to your grade level and create a game just like I did. I'll have my phonics game up here and I'll be walking around the classroom to help you and show you some more tools that might help you specifically for your project. At this point, are there any questions about how to get started in your keynote project? No. no. At the end, we'll have an opportunity to share some of your projects. I just wanted to say, say thank you all for coming to my professional development. I really appreciate your time today. And I hope that you all learned something that you think you can bring back to your classroom. If you want, you can airdrop me your presentation, and I'll put it on a Google Drive so everybody will have access to all the things that you made today. So hopefully that's something you can use in your classroom. I'm going to go ahead and stick around for a little bit afterwards. If you have any questions, come on up and see me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.